I've now added my ZX81 emulator to my Raspberry Pi Pico project. So I've got my VGA monitor which is plugged into my Raspberry Pi Pico here. And the USB keyboard also plugged into my Raspberry Pi Pico. And I've made it now so that when I power up, it will automatically boot into whichever emulator I select. So it boots into the ZX81 now. Uh, but if I go into my emulator menu and quit, it will then do a watchdog reset. And because you can detect the difference between a watchdog reset a normal power on, uh, I can get it to, after I exit an emulator, go into my terminal application where I can go into settings and I can change what it boots into. Or if I hit the reset button, because that's like a power on reset rather than a watchdog reset, that will also go into, my, into the ZX81 because I've got that selected currently to power up there. And just like the ZX80, I can load games just by by type, typing the name in, the file name that I want to load, and it will go through the, the normal tape loading sequence. I've also converted the ZX Spectrum emulator onto here, so I'll do a video of that later in the week. Uh, and also got the 1 to 8K Spectrum as well. Uh, but I need to have a maybe a review of the 1 to 8K Spectrum before I make a video of that. And this will just, I, I'll just demonstrate the Galaxian game on the ZX81 uh, emulator. It'll just take a, a few moments to load. After this, I'll go through a little bit of the source code of what I needed to change uh, to implement the emulators. So after each video, I've been sort of covering a bit of what's needed to change. There's not really much been needed to change to get the emulators to run on the Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, which is why really I've just been putting a bit at the end of each video, just like splitting out over the videos. And, and this video, I just cover up. Um, it, it was not something that really was needed to actually get the ZX81 emulator specifically running. It was just a general thing which needed to be changed to get all of the emulators running. And it's the difference between the code running on a Raspberry Pi and a Raspberry Pi Pico. I just uh, run through uh, an actual play of this game when it's loaded. It's the game that I probably played most of all when I had the ZX81 because my favourite game in the arcade was Galaxians, and the ZX81, emulator, uh, the ZX81 game for Galaxians isn't that much different, considering the actual ability of the ZX81 isn't that much different to the arcade. I mean, you've got the, the dive-in aliens, and of course no sound because it's the ZX81. Uh, but I mean, considering the graphics capabilities of the ZX81, and how it looked in the arcade, I mean, it was never going to be that spot on, but they did a good job of actually making it. Although I got a feeling, because I got this tape image off of um, off of the internet, and it seems to be uh, like on quite a hard level uh, from the start. So I got a feeling maybe tape image was resaved or something, because there's a lot of them seem to dive on the first level which I don't remember ever being the case when I was playing it at home. And it just asked for a uh, high score name. And like I say, just come out, I can reset the uh, emulator or come out of the emulator. So the source code I'll go over is first of all how I get the application to reboot and then decide on whether or not it was a watchdog reboot or a uh, power up reboot or boot up. Uh, so this is in my application how I start up one of my emulators. So this is the X81 emulator. So there's a part of my code which is decided to change into the application mode for ZX81. So I'm just finding that out here. So I then set the display mode to actual the Z, actual ZX81 because we're about to start it up. So this one just detects, is telling my application to actually start it. And the reason why I do that and then do the actual start up here is because when I detect it, I'm actually, it's doing it in part of an interrupt routine. And so I don't actually want to change the actual, actual application mode inside an interrupt routine because that causes all kinds of problems. So I flag it to be changed. And then here in my main loop, I will actually just change it to ZX81 
uh, and then I have to do some cleaning up because I'm changing my application from my, from my terminal into the x81 emulator. So I have to stop the timer, which is my terminal uses. I free up whatever memory the terminal is using because I'm going to need that for the emulator for the x81. Then I actually remove my VJ driver in the PIO and I reinitialize it as being 320 pixels across the screen. So as my terminal uses 640 pixels, so I'm changing the resolution down to 320. And then I set up the arguments. So this the emulators usually run off the command line. So I've still got that. I'm actually calling the main argument of the emulator and passing in arguments like I would do off the command line here. So I'm just telling it to load up the ZX81 ROM. And there I'm calling the, the main routine from in the emulators directory. So this is all the source code that I'm actually using for emulators has just been included in this project. Uh, so it's the same in, in both this project and my desktop project. Uh, and then when it comes out of that, I know that the exit option in the emulator has been, so it stays in that routine until exit has been um, selected. And at this point, I want to reboot. So to force a reboot, you just enable the watchdog with a timeout of zero. And this true is to do something to do with debugging and it pauses on the debug when you're debugging, um, if, if you set this to true. Uh, but I, I'm not debugging, but I put that in there just in case ever want to debug. Uh, so it's going to time out immediately and reboot. So what happens then is I'm coming in through my initialization routine and after the reboot, I can I can call this function watchdog cause reboot and it will tell me if the if the power up is to do with a watchdog reboot or with a otherwise it would be a reset or, or normal power on. And so if it was a watchdog reboot, I'm going to start up in my terminal mode. Otherwise, whatever's in my configuration has been selected in my configuration. So I can select any of my emulators, Jupyter Ace, uh, Spectrum, X81, X80. And it, whichever one's in my configuration has been selected, it will change into that mode at the start of, up of the application. So as I said, at the end of each of these videos of getting my emulators running on Raspberry Pi Pico, I'm just going over a bit of the source code which needed to be changed in order to get the emulators running on Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, for this one, I'm looking at the Z80 memory, which I'm emulating in. And so I've got an offset to the registers for the Z80 in this memory. And then each one is sequentially allocated a, a character and array because these are all 8-bit registers over here. And so the code used to go 0, 1, 0, 1, and then it would be 2, and then 3, and then 4 and 5, uh, continually going up. But I, as you can see now, it goes 0, 1, and then there's 2 missing, so 2, 3, and then 4, and 5. And the reason that I needed to do that for the Raspberry Pi Pico is, further down here, I've got the same registers but as pairs, because in the Z80 you, you can refer to them as registers of pairs. I'm casting it to a short here, which is two, two bytes. And the Raspberry Pi Pico just hangs and crashes. If you try and cast to a short, if it's not cast, if it's not on a 32 bit address boundary. So that's why I've got zero, one, and then three and four, and then, then it starts the next one, which will be on the next 32 bit boundary. So I've had to space these out in these register pairs, so like I said, AF uh, and BC, they've had to be spaced out in, onto 32-bit boundaries. Uh, so that was something I had to do, which was required for Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, 